Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today for Kineo Office Hours. Today what we will be talking about is activity, activity reporting at the system level and then also there's a few activities that have some minor reporting capabilities um, down within them. Now this was a client request so um, I hope that I'm able to touch on all of the aspects. Um, one thing to note and one thing to just kind of keep in mind about activity level reporting is that many of these activities were created in, when it was Moodle or are created using the Moodle side of Totara. So for those of you who may not know or maybe haven't heard about this, um, Totara sits on top of a different LMS called Moodle. Um, Moodle is much more um, higher ed facing versus corporate facing. And so sometimes some of the reporting that we like to see in the corporate world, some of it's not quite there. Totara has come back in and they have added a bunch of reports to different things um, that would be system level type of reporting. And when I say system level, what I'm referring to there is that we have, an act have a particular activity in multiple courses and we're reporting across all courses on my site. Okay, not all of these activities can do that. There are not um, a whole bunch of reports for that, but we're going to kind of take a look and touch on each of them uh, as we go today. A little bit about myself, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Taylor Craig and I'm a platforms consultant. So I get to train you guys and I have the opportunity to uh, work with some people when we're implementing and when we are onboarding. So activity reporting at the system level, can you do it? So the answer is to a point. Um, it's not a definite yes, it's not a definite no. There are particular activities which do have what we would call a system level report. Again, meaning that you have a seminar which is face-to-face -face in an older version of Totara. So uh, Totara 9 it started calling face-to-face -face seminar. So say you have multiple seminars across the board in several different courses then if you're pulling a system level report, you're pulling that report on every seminar instance that you have anywhere on your site. Okay? Same goes for SCORUM, feedback, and assignment. Those are all activities within a course that you may be utilizing that have system level reporting. Now, when we say system level reporting, sometimes we get our hopes up and think, oh good, it's going to give us all kinds of data. Some of these, it doesn't give you a whole lot. It just refers you straight back into the course. Feedback is going to be a direct example of that. So I'll show you what it looks like. We'll take a look at it, and you'll kind of see exactly how detailed you can get. So we'll take a look at how detailed you can get. Now, there are a few of the different activities and resources that have activity level reporting. The three of those would be SCORM, quiz, and feedback. Now again, you can't get super duper detailed, um, but you can get some minor analytics, some different information about your users, and see exactly how many uh, minutes they've spent in a SCORM, and quizzes, you can see exactly which questions they missed, things like that. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look. We're just going to dive right in and see what this looks like. Okay, so here I have my Totara site pulled up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. And first, we're going to start off looking at our system level reports that we can pull. So those are going to be underneath Site Administration. And we're going to go to Reports, Report Builder, and Manage Reports. So we talked that there were a few different things that do allow you to have system level type reporting. SCORUM being one of those, feedback being one of those, assignment, and then seminar. Probably the one that has the most detailed and the most number of reports that revolve around it is going to be a seminar. And the reason that is is because seminar is actually a Totara plugin. It's, um, it was built for Totara specifically, and it's actually not in Moodle. Um, so it's got a lot more reporting revolving around it. Now assignment, feedback, and SCORUM, those are Moodle modules. And so again, they don't have nearly as much reporting capability. Okay, so if we take a look, let's just take a look at the SCORUM report first. Okay. 
So what this is going to do as far as my score I'm reporting at the system level, this is going to show me people's names. So over here it's going to show me user's name, score and title, um, the, the, the actual file name, uh, the number of attempts, which attempt that they are on. It's going to show me the start time. It's going to show me the total time they spent in there, and it's going to show me the status, and if there is a score to be had, it will show me that. Now, as with any other reports, um, there's going to be additional columns and filters and things like that that you could add to this particular report if you needed to. Um, it's going to work exactly like all reports do. Go in, edit the report, and tweak your columns. So this is the data that you would get pulling a SCORM report. Again, not incredibly detailed, but it still gives me something. Okay, uh, You can actually probably add in the course title as well so that you can link directly into the course and see that. Okay, So let's just take a quick peek at that and see what all we can do. I'm sure there's lots of different columns. Yeah, so we can do score and title, start time, status, total time, maximum score, minimum score, attempt number, lots of those different ones. You can get all kinds of user information. You can do course name linked to the course page. That way it will actually take you into the course and where that's located. So you can get a little more detailed and you can see a little bit more there. Okay, so that is going to be your score and report. Next, we'll take a look at the feedback report. For those of you who aren't aware, the feedback module, what feedback does is it allows you to um, think about like something like SurveyMonkey. It's similar. It's not quite as advanced as SurveyMonkey. Um, you have the ability to ask multiple questions and then get feedback from those people. Now, the downside to the feedback report being completely transparent is that it only pulls up a list of the people who have completed one. So it's going to show me who's done it. It's going to show me where that feedback is located. So it's showing me which course it's in, so I can link and go to it. And then it's going to show me, okay, the name of this particular feedback that they have submitted is called course evaluation. And then it's going to show me the time that they completed it. If I want to see the actual details, the actual meat of that feedback module, I have to go to that specific feedback module itself. Okay, so where this is going to fall short, to be completely honest with you, where other surveying tools such as SurveyMonkey, SurveyGizmo, different tools out there, is that this is not going to give you broad level reporting across multiple courses. It is only going to show you, okay, here this has been completed by this person, go to that particular feedback activity and look at what it says. Okay, so it's not going to give us cross course reporting. Okay, so just something to keep in mind and something to be aware of. We will go look at these uh, individuals specifically here in just a moment. Okay, next is going to be, there's two for assignment. Assignment modules, typically we don't see it used a whole heck of a lot in a corporate setting, but we do see it used some. So situations where you may use an assignment module would be, if you need people to download and then fill out a form and then give it back to you, the assignment module is a really good module to do that with. So you can say, I need you to fill out this form by such and such date. You can put a due date on it, things like that. They can download it, fill it out, send it right back. Okay, so in that case, you may want to be able to see, as an administrator or someone else, they may want to see, okay, I need to see who's submitted and when they've submitted and all that good jazz. So we have our assignment submissions. So this is going to show me that here's the assignment name, here's the user's name, and here's the grade. So this is going to give me um, who's done what. Excuse me. This is going to show me who has made a submission and if it has been graded. So in a corporate standing, we might say if it's been received, right? If they have 100, then it's been received. Okay, so in this particular case, this is the different one. This is the assignment submission summary. And what this is going to show me is it's going to say, okay, here's the assignment name. You could probably add in a course column, I'm sure. Um, and it's going to say, okay, one user has submitted it, and the average grade for all those folks is 100 at this point because only one person's done anything. 
Um, but you would see this go up as people submit. Again, this is not going to be cross-course reporting. This is going to say total audiences assignment in course A has been, has 10 people who have submitted it. You could have the same assignment in course B, but it's going to show you a different number. It's not going to total the two. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're not getting, we don't have cross-course functional reporting when it comes to these types of activities. Let's take a look at some of these for seminar. Now, these are just a few of the ones for seminar. If you go down and take a look at the report sources and look under seminar, you'll see that there's quite a few. There's uh, almost like 10 reports here. Okay, so I don't have all of them out for examples because I know we don't have enough time necessarily to look at all of them, but I do want to show you some of these. So here we have a seminar asset assignment. So in TOTRA 9, so if you don't see anything about assets or you're not familiar with assets, that is because you may be using an older version of TOTRA. And basically what, um, what, what you have the ability to do now in TOTRA 9 is you have the ability to manage assets as well. So when I say assets, I'm talking projectors, projector screens, whiteboards, uh, particular rooms maybe, different things, tools that people may need to utilize. Um, so you can have them, give them the ability to check these things out as they create sessions, uh, and that way they know that it is being utilized. And then there's also a, a broader report here where you could make it available just like you do with any report. You can make it available to whomever needs to see it um, and they can see which assets are, are being used and when and where. Okay, so there's an assets report. Uh, you do have other seminar assets. That's just what assets do we have available is all that one does. Then we have our seminar events. So when, when and where are these things happening? So this is showing me here's all the courses that have seminars in them. Here are the different seminar names, and then I have some actions that I can perform. So I can click and I can actually look directly at attendees. So it's going to take me a little bit further here. It takes me basically into that particular seminar itself, where I can manage attendees, wait lists, manage users, and all of that good stuff. Okay, so you have that particular seminar report, and then we have a seminar sessions report. This is going to be a little bit different. Basically shows me the individual session. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look. So those are going to be your main system level reports. And again, unfortunately, they don't get super detailed. They don't get down into um, the nitty gritty of sometimes what people are wanting to pull out. Let's take a look at the reports that we have available at the course level, and really when we say course level, we mean course in the activity. So if I come in here and go to Find Learning Courses, I'm going to locate my course here. So a really common question that we get a lot of times is, how can I pull reports on my quizzes? Um, unfortunately, there's just not a really super great way to do it at this time. We have how do, you, I've got this quiz here. And I've got three different quizzes, but I can only report on a quiz per quiz basis. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna give me the results on all of the quizzes. It's not gonna show me all of the questions in all of the quizzes. It's not gonna give me that information. But I do have some things that I can pull on a per quiz basis. So if I want to, I can come in and I can look under quiz administration once I'm inside of the quiz. I do have a results area. Here I can come in, I can take a look at the grades that people have received. So I see how many people have taken it, I see the grade, I see the scores that they have received on each question. And then I also see the grade range. So I see the um, participants, I have one participant right now because I've got one person that got between a 90 and a 95 and one that got between a 95 and a 100. As these numbers progress and as I have more people, you'll see this scale, uh, this this graph change over time. Okay, so that's kind of showing me that information. I then also have a responses area. What this will show me is it will show me the person. I have the ability to review their attempt. I can see their grade. I see the current state of the quiz. And I see the response that they gave. 
Now, if you wanted to give a little, if you wanted more information, so here I've got it selected where it's showing me the question text, the response, and the right answer. So I'm able to see which question she had, her response, and then if she got it right or wrong. Um, so we're able to see all of that information. You'll notice she can download this into a CSV, an Excel spreadsheet. There's multiple ways to download this. Okay. Um, you can also look at some minor statistics around this one particular quiz. And you can sort it based on a couple of different ways. You can calculate the statistics in a different way. So highest grade, all attempts, first or last. So we're going to do all and then show the report. And again, you can download this. What this is going to give me, it's going to give me the name, uh, the number of people who have completed our average attempts, all of that good stuff. I do get some other uh, statistical information as far as uh, how people are doing on particular questions. So I get an index and a standard deviation, all of these weightings and stuff like that. And then I also get uh, statistics for question position, so um, kind of where they were and how, how they did. Okay. So those are going to be the main things that you have for these particular reports around quizzes. Um, let's take a look at the feedback report that you have on a per feedback basis. So again, it's not all the way across the board. Okay. I do see the questions that are starting to pop in. We will jump on those here in just one second. So if you have an evaluation, you can show an analysis of the, um, of the course. And we see, in this particular case, we did a course evaluation. We have, we're, we're reviewing the people who maybe taught that course. So you can see who has chosen what. So you're able to see how many answers there have been on each question, and you're able to see if they've left something blank. Uh, you can also show particular responses, and you can come in here and you can actually look at a particular person's responses individually. Now, you can set these evaluations up to be anonymous, so you do have the ability to do that as well. Again, unfortunately, we can't report um, across courses, at least not in core. So as you guys know, a lot of times we do have the ability to go in and customize and make the reports that you need. Um, and we're more than happy to do that. What I show in office hours is generally always core um, or maybe a plugin that we have that's already been developed. But if you have a need for something much more detailed and much, uh, much more analytics, um, in that case it may actually be a custom situation. So um, I, I hope that this uh, answers any questions that you guys have around these types of reports. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor back over to you guys. Thank you again so much for joining me. And I'm going to look at questions now. 